Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Courtney and today I am bringing you some of my most favorite fall DIYs. I know it may seem a little bit early, but I'd like to give you some inspiration so that when fall starts to roll out in your favorite store, whether it's Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Dollar Tree, you'll have some ideas already in that back pocket. Not only will you get some ideas from me, my sweet friend Whitney from Whiskey and Wit is partnering with me today and she's going to be giving you tons of ideas with her awesome fall DIYs. So make sure you check out the description box below and click the link to her video. Leave a pumpkin in the comments to let her know you're visiting. And without further ado, let's get into today's DIYs. For this Dollar Tree DIY, you're gonna need to start with one of the wooden crates. This one, I just used some brown wax to go ahead and stain it, but you certainly could paint it brown or leave it natural colored. And I'm also gonna use some of these wood pieces. They also came from Dollar Tree quite a while ago for the wheels. So what I'm gonna be making is a little wagon. And to attach the little wooden pieces on the bottom, I'm just gonna use some hot glue. Now, if you don't have these, just go out, find a nice thick branch, cut it off, and make your own wheels. Next, it's time to go ahead and make the uh, handle, I guess you could say, for the wagon. So I took a small piece of a popsicle stick and glued it to the bottom and let it overhang the edge of the wagon just a little bit. And then that will allow me some space to hot glue another popsicle stick to that little area. And I just used a hot glue to kind of get it stabilized and held it there till it was dry. Then I was ready to make my little handle for the top and I'm just gonna use a wire and make it kind of in a skinny oval shape. And then I will att attach that to the top of the popsicle stick. For the sign on the wagon, I made a free printable here with a couple different options that you are welcome to print out. It will be linked down below in the description box. I chose the one that I wanted to use and then I went ahead and cut it out and attached it just with some regular old glue on a glue stick to a piece of cardboard just to make it a little sturdier. And then to attach it to my wagon, I'm actually going to glue some twine to the back of the little sign and that way I can tie it onto the wagon and then take it off off, and this wagon can be used for pumpkins for fall or Christmas trees for Christmas or whatever you want to use lemons for summer so lots of options by not permanently attaching the sign to it and then once that was done I just stuffed the inside of the wagon with some Dollar Tree raffia and then grabbed some of their little mini styrofoam pumpkins that they have every year and I kind of wanted them not to look so plasticky so I did paint all of the stems um, just because they're so super shiny with a little bit of brown paint and I just put them in there and this wagon is all finished. Moving into this DIY, you're gonna need some of these pumpkins from Dollar Tree. You're also gonna to need to cut two of the pumpkins directly in half vertically. So for this one, we're gonna make a tall pumpkin and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the stems. You wanna go ahead and save those in case you never know, you may need them later on. And then once I get those done, I'm gonna take two of the pieces and I'm gonna use some hot glue and I'm going to glue each piece to each side of the whole pumpkin that hasn't been cut. Now I am making sure to go ahead and um, put all of the holes kind of on one end of the pumpkin. And then once I've done that and got both of these sides on, I'm gonna take my other two pieces that I cut and I'm also going to hot glue them on to my pumpkin. 
Then taking a little bit of hot glue, I'm just gonna squirt it down in the holes just to kind of give it some extra, I don't know, adhesion. Um, there weren't many pieces that had it, just three of them had the holes. And then I'm gonna to go ahead and take some spackling and fill in all of those holes and let that dry really, really good. And then once that's dry, I'm ready to go ahead and paint and I'm just gonna paint it orange. And then here I've got another one of these pumpkins. I'm gonna make another one. This is gonna be a short and squatty pumpkin. And I'm just turning this one on the side, but you're going through the same steps. You're gonna to need to cut some pumpkins. You're gonna glue them on there, deja vu, ditto, whatever you wanna call it from the directions I just gave you. And go ahead and get this put together and painted. Now we just need to finish these off. So you need to go ahead and add a stem to it. I'm just, again, using these little uh, tree pieces that I've had left over from Dollar Tree. That's what I use for these. But you could use the little stem that you pulled out by just sticking it back in the hole. And then I took some twine and then I had this kind of suede, I don't even know what it was, like a ribbon kind of deal. And I tied that around. And then I also took some of the wire twine from Dollar Tree and made a little tendril for the smaller pumpkin. And that's it, you've got yourself some really cute pumpkins. Now we are ready to make an apple barrel. You're gonna need some paint sticks from the hardware store, not the super long ones, just the regular size. Two cross stitching hoops, two different sizes. But you could also pick up some of these mini reef forms if you don't have the cross stitching hoops. Now for the cross stitching hoops, what you actually wanna work with are the two inside pieces, the ones that do not have the little latching tightening mechanism on them. And the first step you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and take some foam uh, from Dollar Tree and you're going to want to trace around your smaller hoop and cut that out. After I cut out my foam circle, I did make it um, bigger. I trimmed it down so that it would fit inside of the hoop. Then I'm gonna take some hot glue and I am gonna put it around the edges of the foam and I'm gonna stick it in there and secure it really well and then go along the seam as you can see here, just securing again with some hot glue to make sure it will hold up. And before it's time to assemble, I'm ready to paint everything. I'm gonna be using the elephant colored paint from Waverly and I'm going to paint the base that color as well as the ring and I'm going to paint 16 of the paint sticks that color as well. It's time to go ahead and assemble this. So you want to make sure that the little notch in the paint stick stick is on the um, top of the paint stick. So I just found the easiest way to do this is to start with kind of a north, south, east, west way of gluing things in. So start with a paint stick, glue it on the base, glue it on the ring, and then do the complete opposite. Put that paint stick in and then go east, then go west, or whichever order you want to do. And then continue doing that. Whenever you glue a paint stick in, you're going to glue the opposite one across from it. And it worked out really well. With the paint sticks all secured in there, now it's ready to go in and just dry brush with a little bit of the steel Waverly chalk paint. And then this little apple crate, basket, barrel, trash can, whatever you want to call it, is ready to go. Now this fall DIY was a result of one of my mystery box projects. I was sent this sign and I didn't want the little top part. So I went ahead and cut that off and then I painted the entire little picture orange.
Once the picture was orange, I also had one of the little Dollar Tree votives and I went ahead and painted that orange so that that would be kind of the base to hold up my little um, display here. And then once that was assembled, I was ready to go ahead and start putting some fall florals. I got that from Hobby Lobby and then I just filled it with some random things to make it all folly. And there you go, a really cute little display piece that you could put on a tear tray or on a shelf or just on your side table if you'd like. This DIY was a result also of one of my DIY mystery box challenges. So what you're gonna to need to grab is one of the bamboo wind chimes from Dollar Tree. And these are great to use to help create a little canvas wall hanging. Now this is obviously gonna be kind of a smaller size, but that's okay. Then you're gonna to wanna to grab some canvas material. This just came from Hobby Lobby. And I did opt to go ahead and pull some of the threads to get it nice and frayed on the edges. And then taking some of my Sherbonder fabric fabric glue. I love this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and just glue the fabric around the bamboo wind chime pieces. And then as far as the front goes, it's up to you. Now you could do an iron on on this. If you have a cutting machine, like a Cricut or Silhouette, you could also use iron on transfer paper by printing something from your printer and then ironing on that. I am going to be doing some DIYs with iron on transfer. For those of you who don't have a Cricut, it's a great cheap way to kind of get the same look. You could also just add things to it. And that's what I decided to do is I grabbed one of the wooden pumpkins from Dollar Tree and I covered it with scrapbook paper and I just went ahead and just kind of made a 3d wall hanging out of this and then it's super easy you just thread some of your twine string yarn whatever you want to use ribbon through the wind chime and then you're ready to hang it up For this one, I am using some scrap wood. This is a two by four that I had in my garage and I'm cutting it down to 10 inches, eight inches and six inches. I'm going to paint them all with some of this Monarch uh, paint by Folk Art. Once that's finished, I'm gonna take a little bit of brown wax and just go ahead and brush the edges and give it a little bit of a distressed look. Then for my stems, I used some of the little wood pieces again. I know Dollar Tree hasn't had these in a long time, but I'm sure you can make do by finding some type of stick in your yard. And then I had some green floral wire and I went ahead and made little green tendrils. And then I went in and wanted to add some leaves as well as some little florals that came from Dollar Tree to kind of finish off the look. Then I took a piece of burlap and just wrapped it around the pumpkins. And to finish it all off, I had one of the little chalkboard signs from Dollar Tree. And then I just had some Thanksgiving stickers that I'd gotten a while ago from Hobby Lobby. I put one of those stickers on the little sign and that's it. You've got yourself a little pumpkin display. For this quick and easy DIY, you're gonna start with one of these little signs from Dollar Tree and you wanna go ahead and break the whole thing down. I'm gonna start by painting the frame with some brown truffle paint from Waverly. Once that's done, I had some of the scrapbook paper that came from Hobby Lobby and I went ahead and used some spray adhesive and attached it to the back of this little picture. When that was finished, I took one of the little mini pumpkins and cut it in half and painted the little stem. I also created another little tendril out of some green floral wire, wire, and then I also painted the little circle with some plaster Waverly chalk paint. At that point, all the pieces were done and I just needed to, to reassemble it into this cute little picture that you could put on a three-tier tray or on your desk or even on a shelf.
Moving into this Dollar Tree DIY, you're gonna need six of their wooden pumpkins. So I started by filling the little holes on them with some spackling, and this color scheme is up to you. I decided to kind of go with the monochrome, so I'm gonna have one pumpkin that is white. Four of them are gonna be different shades of gray, kind of in an ombre effect. And then my last pumpkin is going to be black. Now to get the grays, I did use elephant gray, silver lining, as well as steel, and then I mixed a little white in there so you can kind of play with it but up to you you could do candy corn themed you could do I mean whatever you wanted to do so for the very last pumpkin that's going to be black I started by painting it with one coat of white paint then I took some Dollar Tree stickers and I went ahead and put down the words hello fall and I made sure they were nice and secure you could do a quick little uh, coat of Mod Podge before you put the stickers down if you'd like to to kind of try to control the bleeding that's up to you and then I'm just going to take some black paint paint over all the sticker letters paint the entire pumpkin and then I'm going to peel up those stickers After I just cleaned up a little bit of the lettering, I went ahead and laid out my pumpkins and then was trying to decide between what type of bow I wanted to add to my Hello Fall. I had some of that gray raffia that came from Dollar Tree, but then I also had a buffalo check. And so once I kind of messed around with it, I was ready to just hot glue all the pumpkins down directly to my sign, glue my ribbon down, and then I also ended up adding some little green leaves that came from Hobby Lobby. This Dollar Tree sign was a start of a project that uh, didn't quite pan out, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue using this by finishing off painting it all the way white, then grabbing one of the Dollar Tree snakes. I'm gonna cut off its head, I'm gonna cut off its tail, along with a couple little segments of his body, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint the entire thing orange. So now you want to take that tail that you cut off if you're starting to feel a little bit like a taxidermist i'm sorry about that but you're going to take a piece of that and you're going to go ahead and paint it brown this is going to become the stem for our little snaky pumpkin and then from there i took the box and i went ahead and took a little bit of the brown crane wax that i like to use and i just kind of distressed around the edges and then for the background i didn't want to leave it white so i just took a piece of burlap cut it down to size and hot glued it directly into the back of the little box and then from there I was ready to go ahead and insert my snake pumpkin. Foam dice from Dollar Tree are the star of our next DIY, so grab yourself four dice and then go ahead and give them a good coat of paint. Now what color paint you decide to do as far as fall colors is up to you, but I went ahead and went with the plaster Waverly chalk paint and it took about three coats to get them all covered. Then I took some of my brown wax and I just brushed around the edges of each of the dice. Then using some of these gold transfer letters from Dollar Tree, I cut out F-A-L-L -L, and then I went ahead and applied these stickers to um, the blocks, putting one little transfer onto each of the foam blocks. Then I was ready to go ahead and attach the stems. These again were those Dollar Tree little pieces of wood that they haven't had since, but you know the drill, just go find some in your yard. And I just hot glued the stems to the top. And then I wanted to add just a little bit more embellishment. So I took some of the burlap leaves they had and some of their green leaves, and I just cut them down to a little bit of a smaller size. And I hot glued them directly to the foam blocks. And then that's it, you've got yourself a little fall wood block faux uh i said that wrong let me start over a fall faux wood block design Now
Now we are ready to make a 3D pumpkin sign. So what you're gonna wanna grab is some type of either frame or sign from Dollar Tree, or this one came from Hobby Lobby on clearance. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna cover up that wonderful design, give me a home or the buffalo roam with some white paint. Once that's all covered up, I'm gonna grab myself one of the small foam pumpkins from Dollar Tree, as well as a pack of their, I'm gonna call these, the mini, even though now I know they have even mini, minier. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying. And what we want to do is cut this white one in half, and then we're going to cut one of the orange ones in half as well. So we'll just call the white one a medium sized, and then the orange ones are the small size because I do believe there are now mini pumpkins at Dollar Tree. And I just put a piece of tape on there to help me cut it, and I'm just going to use um, a serrated knife, which I found a lot easier if you have a um, a heat tool, you can also cut it with that. Once those are cut, we're ready to go ahead and paint our pumpkins the color that we want them. And then again, I'm gonna paint those stems because I just don't like the shiny plastic look they give off. So I'm gonna paint them with a little bit of brown paint. The last component of our sign are these wooden letters that came from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna give them one good coat of the fawn colored paint from Waverly Chalk Paint. Now I've grabbed some truffle paint from Waverly as well as the fawn paint and I'm just doing a little mix of palooza here and I'm just mixing it up until I get a color that I like. And then I'm gonna use my fan brush and just lightly brush this paint color on all three of my pumpkins. And then I'm ready to play the Jenga Tetris of trying to figure out the design of the sign. And I mess around with a couple different ideas. And once I figure out what I wanna do, I go ahead and hot glue everything to my sign and then it is ready to go. And of course, you know, with fall, I love to add little tendrils. So I did take some of my brown wire and make a little tendril to add to one of the pumpkins. Moving into this next Dollar Tree DIY, it is probably one of my most favorite ones that I made about three years ago. I saw a farmer's market stand at Kirkland's and I knew I could recreate it with Dollar Tree supplies. So to start, you're gonna need a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and I'm cutting this one to about, it was about four inches wide and about 12 inches long. You can make it as wide or as short as you want. Once this is cut out, you're gonna to need to grab yourself some of the large popsicle sticks. These came from Walmart, and I'm gonna go ahead and start working on my fence. So you're gonna need one that lays um, horizontally, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put five that are vertically, and then I'm gonna decide how tall I want my fence to be, and then go ahead and trim down the little fence pickets. Now I'm ready to go ahead and attach my popsicle stick to these five little pickets. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make my two side pieces for my little fenced area. When the sides are finished, you're ready to go ahead and assemble this. So I'm gonna hot glue my two side pieces on and then hot glue my entire little fence that I made to that white foam board piece that I cut, which is the base of my farmer's market stand. Now taking two of the wooden rulers from Dollar Tree that I've peeled off the little number strips from and some of the tower blocks, I'm gonna go ahead and glue the flat side of the ruler kind of facing the fence. And I'm gonna glue um, one ruler on each side, attaching it to that end. And then I'm just gonna use these jingle blocks to kind of help secure these in. That way it's glued to that ruler as well as that side popsicle stick as well as the bottom. So they're just used for extra support. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and put a back on this and I'm just gonna hot glue some popsicle sticks to the back of my farmer's market stand. Mm -hmm. 
Now for the top of the farmer's market stand, I cut another piece of foam board. This one was about six inches wide and again, 12 inches long, um, a little bit longer. It's up to you if you want it to overhang or be exactly the same measurement. And then I just took some of the large popsicle sticks that Dollar Tree sells and I'm gonna stack two of them together. I'm gonna hot glue them and trim them down and then glue the popsicle sticks to the top of this, ending up with six little popsicle stripes on top of the roof. For the back of the farmer's market stand, I grabbed one of these little uh, grease trappers. <laughs> um, I can't think of the name of it, but you know, you put it over your pan to keep from the grease from popping out. You're gonna go ahead and grab one of these from Dollar Tree and then trim off the little netting stuff in the back. And that is what I uh, ended up hot gluing to the back of my farmer's market stand. To finish this up, I went ahead and glued a popsicle a stick across the top and then on the back, I wanted to make it look a little bit neater so I did glue some popsicle sticks down just to kind of clean up the back a little bit. Then I was ready to work on attaching my roof piece and to get that attached, I realized the easiest way to do that was to take a popsicle stick and glue it um, to the one of the long sides of my roof piece and basically it will just kind of fit on there, kind of like a little puzzle piece, I guess is the best way I can describe it. Now that this is all assembled, I can go ahead and go in and paint it. So I just painted the entire thing with some of the Waverly White chalk paint, and then I was ready to work on my signs. I made this free printable that I will have linked down below that you can use. And I went ahead and cut these out and then I attached them to some foam board for the farmer's market sign. I definitely wanted that to kind of stick out a little bit. So I attached that to a piece of foam board. And then for the pumpkins for sale, I just added a popsicle stick to that because that's just kind of kind of prop on the front. And I just used a glue dot to kind of attach to the back so that I can use this farmer's market stand for all kinds of seasons and change out the sign. I cut a piece of foam board again and then just attached a bunch of moss to it and then I went in and went ahead and stacked in pumpkins and this is how it turned out when it was all finished. Um, I absolutely love how it turned out. I think it turned out super cute and you certainly could add lights to it and I definitely wanted to show you the one that I saw at Kirkland's because I found it there and when it was on clearance I bought it and so this was the one from Kirkland's and then my little makeover to the one from Kirkland's looked like this so of course I went in and added some light and then there's little mini hay bales which you can also get from Dollar Tree and all the little pumpkins so such a cute little thing that you can display for all the different seasons You're gonna wanna grab some shoelaces, especially these because they are fall colors, orange and yellow, and a mason jar. So what I'm gonna make is just a really cute little straw holder. You could also use it to hold utensils. You could also turn it into a cute little Kleenex holder if you wanted to. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by wrapping the shoelaces around the mason jar. I am gonna use a little bit of hot glue to help secure it. And I'm gonna end up using a total of six of these shoelaces to get this mason jar completely wrapped. Once it's completely wrapped, then for the top, I decided to take some burlap ribbon and go ahead and attach it to the top and then I folded it in so it kind of covered up the glass look on the inside. And then once that was finished, I just wanted to add a little embellishment. So I'm using one of the little Dollar Tree pumpkin stickers and added some twine. You could add a little label to this. You could make this a little treat bouquet. Um, you could put flowers in it. It could be used for many different things, but it's a very simple 
simple, quick, and inexpensive fall DIY. We're gonna be making a pumpkin themed cake stand for this Dollar Tree DIY. So taking one of the stove covers, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good coat of black paint, then grab one of their little crystal candlesticks and I wanted to change the shape of it. So I'm just taking two toilet paper rolls and I'm going to just cut them all the way down and then go ahead and trim them so that they'll fit. And I'm gonna put one and wrap it around, use a little bit of painter's tape because it won't quite go all the way around. And then for the second one, I'm gonna go over that little gap and cover that up. And then again, use some painter's tape to go ahead and get that all smoothed out. Once that's finished, I'm going to be using some super glue as well as some hot glue to attach one of the little ceramic pumpkins. So I'm gonna use a super glue and I'm gonna fill in that little candlestick. And then that way, when I put the pumpkin in there, I'm gonna put the stem part in there and it gets really nice and secure. And then I'm going to go ahead and take some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope and then wrap it around the base here so it covers up all my little toilet paper roll and painter tape experimental wrapping there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and seal my tray with some of the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Sealer. And then once that's all dry, I can go ahead and just super glue that directly to my little base and it's all finished. This DIY is my favorite one to make for housewarming and weddings. Now the reason I'm showing my everyday Lazy Susan here is because at some point I wanna figure out how to do this. This one had turquoise um, into it and I think I know how to do it but I've yet to tackle it. But that's why I'm showing you that. But this right here was one of the cheapest gifts to give. Now I know the cost of wood has gone up so it's a little more but honestly this would cost me $12 to make and it's just a custom wedding lazy susan or like i said housewarming or whatever you want to make it but for now i'm making a holiday one and so what i'm doing is using some of the annie sloan old white paint and i'm just giving it a real good coat of that paint then i cut out a stencil on my cricut and i'm going to apply that to my lazy susan now you can go ahead and um, seal your lazy susan with just one coat or if you want to put a coat of mod podge just to help with bleeding um that works as well, but if you really want to help, then what you want to do is before you go on to painting like I did here, just take um, some of that whatever you painted your Lazy Susan, the old white, and you wanna just go ahead and paint a coat of that. Then go in with your different colors and paint it. And that will also help it from bleeding. Then once I got all my colors on there, it was good to go and it was ready to be sealed. And I'm just using some of the Verithane Poly and I'm giving it two good coats of that. And then what you need to do is on the bottom, attach some Lazy Susan hardware. You wanna make sure you get the 16 inch. Um, this round came from Home Depot and it was the 18 inch round it wasn't the super large one so for the 18 inch you want to make sure it's ball bearing and that it's the six inch lazy susan hardware like i said they have it at home depot they also sell them on amazon and then you also want to get some little felt pads and so all you're going to do is just attach your lazy susan hardware to the bottom just by screwing it directly in and then just take felt pads and place them on there so that it won't scratch your table and that's it you've got a really nice gift.
This next fall DIY is also a kitchen piece. So you're gonna wanna grab yourself one of the little cutting boards from Dollar Tree. And I decided to go ahead and paint it with some white paint so that it didn't look like it was made out of plastic, even though it is. Then I found this really fun uh, recipe on Pinterest and I went ahead and sized it down. I will link it down below if I can still find it. And once I got that all trimmed down to size, I had some of this orange paper or orange pumpkin paper from Hobby Lobby. I went ahead and just used a glue stick to glue my recipe to the pumpkin paper. And then taking some Mod Podge, I attached the whole thing to my cutting board. And then I also sealed it in again with some more of the gloss Mod Podge. From there, I took some of the wooden pumpkin stickers that Dollar Tree has, and I used some of my acrylic art markers and I just painted those in with the marker and colored them in and then I hot glued one of the pumpkins to the cutting board and added a little bit of twine at the top and that's it you've got yourself a really cute little piece to display as well as a fun recipe to follow if you like pumpkin pie Now when I think of fall, I definitely think of pie. So what I'm making here is a real cute little pumpkin pie and apple pie garland. So what you're gonna need for this is some felt. And then I have this little template here that I will link down below for you. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and cut your pieces of felt. Each one of these is gonna be for a piece of pie. So however many pieces of pie you want on there. And I'm just gonna take this and cut it with my rotary cutter. And then once that's done, I'm going to also cut a piece of this tan colored felt, but I'm gonna cut it a little bit past the, um, I guess, length of this orange wedge. And that's gonna be the crust for the pie. Once that's all done, I'm gonna take my little curved Fisker scissors and I'm just gonna freehand making some little scallops on this little beige tan colored piece to make it look more like a piece of pie. And now I'm gonna at attach my felt pieces together with some of the fabric hot glue from Sherbonder. Love this stuff if you're not a sewer. This is great stuff to use. And then I'm also gonna take some white pom-poms and kind of fluff them up. That's gonna be my little whipped cream. And I'm also going to hot glue those onto the center of the pie. Then I'm gonna start working on my apple pies. And for the filling on that one, I've got a darker brown, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out using that same pattern. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and cut out a base piece for the crust. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of this tan and slice about a quarter inch slices. So what I've got here, I've got some brown triangles, also some of the cream colored light tan that are the exact same size. And then I also have some of the tan triangles that are a little bit bigger like we did for the pumpkin pie. And you're gonna kind of see why I have that much. So to assemble it, first I'm gonna take a piece of the brown felt and put it on my larger tan colored uh, pie crust. And then the smaller ones that I also cut out, I'm going to cut these at a diagonal and that's gonna be for my lattice work. And that's what's gonna be on top. And the reason I did this is that way I can make sure the pieces fit and I can kind of pick and choose which ones that I want to use. And then for those quarter inch strips, you're just gonna take one and take the end of it and glue it kind of on that top part. And then I'm just going to kind of squish it up and tack it down, squish it up, tack it down. And that way that'll make the top of that crust look really, really cool. 
And before I assemble my banner, I'm gonna take some of this Scotchgard fabric protectant and spray these, especially since this is going in my kitchen. I just want them to be extra protected. And then to get them ready to hang up, I'm just gonna take some twine and I'm gonna hot glue it towards the top of the piece of pie because if you glue it in the middle, it's gonna do some weird flopping thing like some fish out of water. It's just gonna flop all around and look kind of ridiculous. So make sure you kind of glue that string towards the top. And then I'm also gonna take a little piece of felt and just put it over the twine just to give it a little bit of extra security. But you certainly could make all kinds of different pies, cherry pie, strawberry pie, whatever kind of pie you like. Let me know down below. Do you guys like pie? This Dollar Tree DIY is great for the kitchen. So you're gonna wanna pick, out, pick up a two pack of these little copper colored uh, little dish scourers from Dollar Tree. And the first thing you wanna do is just fluff them up. So just kind of gently pull them apart until you get them fluffed up how you want them to look. And then you're gonna wanna take whatever you wanna use for a stem. I, again, I'm just using some of those Dollar Tree little stem things that I had. And I'm gonna hot glue that to the top. And then the last step, all I'm gonna do is take some stiff green felt and I'm gonna use my pinking shears and I'm gonna go ahead and cut out some little leaves to add to it and that's it. This DIY is all finished and a perfect little fall accessory for your kitchen. This little sign is the star of the show for this DIY. So I started with one of these little gather signs and I started by painting over the word gather with some of the moss chalk paint. Once that was finished, I grabbed three different pumpkin signs from Dollar Tree and I went ahead and broke them down and then I also removed the glitter. When that was finished, I took some of the brown craft paper from Dollar Tree and I traced around my pumpkins and cut them out so that that could be the back of each of the pumpkins. And then I was ready to work on each of these pumpkins. So grabbing one of the smaller ones, I cut out a piece of scrapbook paper that came from Hobby Lobby and I went ahead and covered the pumpkin. Once that was finished, I took some raffia and I went ahead and braided it. And then I went ahead and just attached it with some hot glue to this plaid pumpkin. The other two pumpkins also got some scrapbook paper attached to them, also from Hobby Lobby, and I just added different embellishments. All the embellishments came from Dollar Tree, burlap leaves, regular leaves. And then once that was all finished, I went ahead and secured them to that little gather sign that I had painted. I used some of the tower blocks to help them get secured, and then I went in with some moss and went ahead and hot glued that in all around the pumpkins. Rolling into this next Dollar Tree DIY, you wanna pick up one of these pumpkin signs and break it down. Take off the twine, the burlap ribbon, and the leaf. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the back of the sign with some of the pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. You can paint both sides if you'd like to finish it off and make it look nice, or I end up adding a piece of brown paper later on. And then you're also gonna need some yarn. So I've got this orange yarn that kind of had different colors of orange in it. It wasn't like a solid orange. And I started by securing a little piece of it to the back and what I'm gonna do is wrap the yarn around making vertical stripes so to speak so you can make these as thick as you want or as thin as you want but I'm gonna do all the vertical ones first then once those are done I'm gonna start doing the horizontal stripes and again I'm gonna secure a little piece of the yarn to the back but I am gonna thread it through a yarn needle because I'm gonna weave my horizontal stripes in and out of my vertical ones. So essentially I'm making a little, little kind of basket weave. And once I get all my horizontal stripes done, I'll make sure it's all secured with glue.
to finish this pumpkin off, I wrapped the stem with some twine. And then I also had this harvest metal uh, word from Dollar Tree that I glued on to the center of the pumpkin. And then I also um, decided to go ahead and cover the back, like I said, with some of that brown craft paper. I played around with a couple different things and I ended up just adding an extra little twine bow and then trim that off and that was it this pumpkin was all finished And for this Dollar Tree DIY, I took some of this fabric that came from Hobby Lobby and I just cut it into half inch strips. Once those were cut, I took one of the mini wreath forms from Dollar Tree and I started to wrap all the little different rings so that it was completely covered with the fabric. Once it was done, I was ready to take some raffia and I just took a little bundle of raffia, probably about four or five pieces, tied a knot on one end, and I started just going, weaving in and out, under and over, under and over, and until the entire wreath was completely finished and wrapped. When the entire wreath was wrapped, I just took some of that extra raffia that was left over and braided it, and then I just made a little hanger for the wreath. Then taking one of the little pumpkins I from Dollar Tree, I went ahead and covered it with some scrapbook paper. And what I decided to do was just to kind of make this wreath a little bit different. So I took this pumpkin, added a little embellishments to it, the little pumpkin stickers. And then I took some of that fabric that I had wrapped around the wreath form. And I went ahead and just glued a piece of that to the back of the wreath. And then I set my pumpkin inside. And there you have it, tons of fall DIYs for you. I hope they provide you with a little bit of inspiration so when you're out and about, you might come up with some great ideas to make some fall projects. Don't forget to go check out Whitney's video. It's linked down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.